but what makes a good transition from a wrestler to a manager? Uh, <clears throat> well, number one, you got to worry about whoever you're managing. You have to get that person over. Uh, whatever it takes as far as bumping is concerned. I mean, what's, what's good about being a wrestler going in and then becoming a manager is you already know how to bump. You know most of the storylines. You know most of the work. So uh, I, I like managers that are able to bump and take hits and blows and stuff like that uh, than guys that don't. And uh, I think it's mostly guys who are used to be wrestlers who become managers are the ones that really, uh, I think, stand up, in my eyes anyway, as uh, better managers. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I was just curious because, I mean, there's so many various kinds of managers, especially nowadays. It's like a, most of them are valets, you know, and uh, they just pretty much just walk to the ring, look pretty, and walk away. You know, whereas uh, I guess you could even say managers from the 80s, you had guys out there like Bobby the Brain Heenan and Mr. Fuji, both accomplished wrestlers back in there. Well, Bobby Heenan was never really a wrestler, but he was so willing to, you know, take those bumps and stuff like that. You know, uh, obviously he, he worked with Andre the Giant for so many years, and, and Skandar Akbar also had the same kind of career, too, uh, running Devastation Incorporated. Um, it's it's just kind of interesting to to sit there and, and focus and wonder if, you know, what makes a better manager? Is it a wrestler or is it somebody that's brand new and just sticks to managing, you know, sticks to that role the whole time? Right, and these days you don't see a lot of uh, managers who were wrestlers. Even back, you know, in the frame you're talking about, Missionary, with um, Bobby Heenan and, and guys like that, you know, there was always talk to the guys like um, – Jimmy Hart, who, you know, was, was, was a musician in a previous life. Right. Um, you know, but, uh, you, uh, Gary, if, I, if I'm wrong, correct me on this, but, you know, I've always felt that there's as much of an art to man, to doing, to managing than actually wrestling. Maybe not quite as much, but quite, it was quite an art as opposed to just someone walking out there and carrying the jackets and things like that. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Uh, it has to do with, like I said before, I mean, if you were a worker before and then you become a, a manager, it just opens up that uh, that gap where you can do so many more things than what a normal valet would do. I mean, for instance, Francine, I'll give you an example, she was just a valet. And then before you know it, she became such a, a part of our business as far as the, the pit bulls are concerned because when she turned on us and went with Shane Douglas, I mean, it was like, what could we do to her to get her back? And at the time, you know, Paul Heyman was like, uh, a girl has to go through a table, hasn't been done yet, so you guys do it. So, I mean, she was upset about it. She was scared, but we told her not to worry. And after it was done, I mean, she even admitted it. She was like, man, I look great, you know, because... Like I said, it, everybody wanted her to get hit and get nailed somehow and get even with us for what she did to us somehow. So uh, when, we're, when you're able to do that to a manager or, or you know, put, like if a manager does take a bump for you, I mean, it just makes that, that angle and that uh, match so much more interesting. Yeah, definitely, and uh, I, I could have seen that recently. Um, now, what, what I want to do now is just uh, kind of hit a quick, couple quick bullet points about Skandar Akbar's uh, wrestling career and, and early life, for that matter. Um, you know, he grew up in uh, Wichita Falls, Wichita Falls, uh, Texas. I was born in Wichita Falls, Texas. Um, when I found that out and found out you know, after knowing the character he had played, this is also as a, as a youngster, you know, where I was still kind of believing in, you know, wrestling as, as legitimate. Um, but it's kind of surprising to me, just considering he was the uh, he was the four like the big four and heel like their answer to Sheik Adnan Al Casey. Um, but you know later found out his father was from Lebanon and his mother was Syrian, so you know he kind of has that that look there, and he had the the headdress and the garb and everything. Um, and in his wrestling career, he got a start from Luthez. Uh, we talked briefly about his uh, time with Danny Hodge, where he first turned heel by turning on uh, Danny Hodge. You know, that's a hell of a blessing. I, I hate to interrupt, but that's a hell of a blessing to get brought into the business by Lou Fez. I mean, that's that's the guy, that's the grandfather of wrestling. You know, that's the man that's synonymous with it. There are many greats, but 
Luthez is, is among is among the top, you know? Yeah, not many people can say that they were brought into the wrestling business by Luthez. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, you know, Scandal Arts bought one point one the NWA North American Heavyweight title, which, you know, was quite an honor at, at that point, you know, it wasn't quite the world heavyweight title, but you know, it was definitely up there. And then you know, of course when he retired he basically he stuck to managing the foreign heels for a while. Um, of course had his big feud with uh with the Von Erics. But uh did did, did either of you guys have any uh, comments on his uh on his wrestling career? Well, I mean, he also held the tag team title, or the NWA uh, Georgia tag team belts with uh, Ox Baker, who we also have in an interview. You know, um, he also worked with uh, Rocket Monroe, you know, and they they kept the uh, tag team belts in 1972. And, I mean, you, you can go down the list. He, he had the NWA Heavyweight Championship. Um, he really did have a decorated career, you know, a very decorated career, especially in the era. And, you know, speaking of Ox Baker, like you said, we did have an uh, interview with him, so uh, we'll go ahead and, um, and play that now. That's Andy. I'm actually, I don't think we have the Ox Baker interview. It was okay. never able to be uh, fixed, but we do have the other interviews. Coming okay. On. So, yeah, I do remember that one. Was, uh, okay. At this time, I'd like to welcome the maestro wrestling, the Stro to the line. Stro, you got to work with Scandal Akbar. Got to ask you, what do you feel he wants his fans to remember most about him? Well, Scandal Akbar was uh, a, a tremendous manager of uh, many, uh, many top stars in wrestling. I mean, um, from Kamali down to Giants. I mean, the list, the list goes on of the, of the greats he managed, in, uh, including uh, yours truly briefly. Uh, during my stint in the mid nineties, I just got back from a uh, tour of uh, Mexico, took away with Jake Jake Roberts, and we got to uh, I did a couple shows with him and uh, um, Robbie Arwin and the Black Bard and some build world class championship wrestling legends back back in the day. So I mean, Scander uh, was you know a very you know very passionate about the wrestling business. He loved the business very much. And, uh, I mean, great, really nice guy. And, I mean, I mean he, he, he was a great influence on a lot of us that, that knew him and, you know, bumped into him through the years. And, you know, he, his memory will always, you know, will stay with us. Uh huh. Now, what is one of your fondest memories of working with him? Oh, I mean, you know, he it, it was, it was uh, very helpful as far as, you know, as far as it goes. I mean, he would, I mean, the little things he would do to get the people around up during the show was just, <laughs> was, uh, it, it was it, I mean, just, okay. this, this, he would just, like, walk out to the arena and then and just get, you know, instant reaction from the crowd. So, I mean, it's just, uh, uh, you, you're definitely one of a kind. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were to write a book about his life, what would the title be? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever title I would come up with, you would definitely be the one of all time great managers in our industry. I mean, hands down, definitely one of the best. Now, my co host, Andrew Carlos, has a few questions, so Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, hey, so, um what, what kind of an impact do you think Scandal Axel left on the people that were around him in the wrestling business? Well, Scandal really, really, you know, he was passionate, like I said before, and, and really cared about what, what was down in the industry and the people he worked with. I mean, you know, he was a very, very stand-up guy, and, I mean, he, he had vision as well, and, um, you know, a lot of us respect him and appreciate him for that. Now, in some circles, he was known as Ack. What do you feel is Ack's true passion in life? Um, true passion? Uh, outside of the wrestling business, I should say. Outside of wrestling business? Uh, you know, he, he was always, you know, dabbling in different things. Outside. I mean, he was a very, very smart man. And, uh, you know, he would always keep up with, you know, current events and, 
you know, with the news and the different things. I mean, never, never a dull conversation. It's interesting. And it was always, you know, you can make a topic of just about anything you talk about. And what, can, what is one of your favorite out of the ring stories about uh, Ash that you can share with our listeners? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so many. Um, I, well, one, so first, firstly, I, I, I was a part of actually was, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're doing a show instead of Dallas. And it was a six man tag that day. It was, uh, Shane Houston, uh, Charlie Norris, and, uh, Jack Roberts. It's myself, uh, Wild Burwin, and the Black Bart, and the six man tag. And, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I was in the ring with Jake and, uh, Skander, <laughs> Skander was, was, was holding my, my, my foot for, a, for, I had a, I had a, I, had, I think it was a Donald stretcher, a, a chin lock one on our Jake and Skander was holding my leg from my bridge. And while Jake was jabbing on to me and referee was telling me to break <laughs> before the count of five and I couldn't break because, you know, Stan had me on one side and Jake had a dad on to me on the other and I was pretty much stuck. <laughs> <laughs> now just one last question. And uh, what do you see of it, uh, is Scandal as far as legacy in the wrestling business? Legacy. Well, I mean, Skander, you know, like I said, he was a big influence in a lot of us for the years. And I, I just, you know, he was just capable of so much more. I mean, he had a great mind for the industry, and it's just, uh, you know, as, as great as his legacy was, I mean, he, he was capable of even that much more, you know, providing much more, more for the business. So, I mean, um, it, like, like I said, he was definitely the member that's one of the all-time greats. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Is there anything else you'd like to add or anything you'd like to say that you didn't get to say to him before he passed? Well, if, uh, if he's listening to you there in heaven right now, I just want to say, you know, thank you for everything. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for everything you contributed to pro wrestling. And, uh, and you know, my my condolences and thoughts and prayers to the family, friends of Scandal that Barn, people that knew him. I mean, you know, we'll never forget him. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> All right, we are back here on the Scandal Aqua Tribute Show, and we just heard from uh, the maestro of professional wrestling, Lestro, uh, sharing his memories of, uh, of Scandal Aqua. Um, you know, after, uh, you know, guys, after 1977, we've talked about where he retired from in-ring competition. He went to, uh, to managing and, you know, the majority of his time was spent between, um, Bill Watts, uh, Mid-South and World Class Championship Wrestling, uh, managing, uh, a th- running a stable called Devastation Inc., which was kind of, it was kind of like the, uh, the human family before the human family, so far as the Southwest and even the, uh, the Mid-South area goes. Would you guys agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there were plenty of stables, but Devastation Inc. was, uh, definitely popular for the Texas. Yeah, you know, they had their, they had their big feud with the Von Erics and, you know, for years, you know, they got involved in the Von Erics free, free bird rivalry and, uh, you know, Gary, it kind of reminded me of, uh, some of the guys you've worked with in ECW, like the Tommy Dreamer and Raven rivalry, where that always kind of spun off to different rivalries. Seems to me like that, uh, like that, growing up with that Bon Eric, Freebird rivalry always spun off to include different kind of guys. 